Grand Seiko High Accuracy Quartz GMT. Grand Seiko High Accuracy Quartz GMT. To people of a certain disposition, Grand Seiko High Accuracy Quartz and GMT is a thrilling combination. Those people are a class within a class within a class of nerds. Watch collectors who love Japanese watches, who enjoy high-end quartz movements. I am a person of that class. So to me, this SBGN003 demonstrates a lot of what's great about Grand Seiko watches. Grand Seiko is one of my favorite brands. I've done a few videos on their watches and have owned several. Their design philosophy, their history, quality, it all works for me. I also like the range of their technology. Traditional mechanical, high-end quartz, and the innovative spring drive. And okay, I do get perverse pleasure from trolling European watch purists by talking about how good Japan is at watchmaking. It was about two years ago when I first read the rumors that Grand Seiko was working on their first GMT quartz watch. At the time, no one knew what it would look like, but everyone knew that it was going to be special. And everyone was right. It was a long wait, but it was worth it. The SBGN003 is the black dial variant of the new Grand Seiko Quartz GMT line. Like the 001 and the 005, this reference comes in at a nearly perfect 39 millimeters in diameter, 12 millimeters thick, and 45 millimeters long. It's water resistant to 100 meters. And that's all great, but there are plenty of watches, even GMT watches, with similar dimensions and water resistance. So, what makes this one special? Let's start with the finish. The finishing, that is. If you've heard of Grand Seiko, you've probably heard about their legendary attention to detail, especially at the sub $10,000 price range, and in this case, at about $3,500. There's a lot to enjoy about the finer details of this SBGN003, so I'll just shut up and let the pictures do the talking. Not bad, right? I do want to say something a little controversial though. Grand Seiko refers to their mirror polishing as Zeratsu. They tout it, and it's good. But honestly, I can't tell the difference between Zeratsu polishing and any other polishing from Swiss watches at similar prices. Don't email me. Now let's talk about the movement. One of the things I enjoy about watches is that they are archaic. They're unnecessarily mechanical and complicated. Like a lot of people, I'm attracted to the purity of gears and springs, shunning electronics. But there's an art to be appreciated about high accuracy quartz movements, like the 9F86 in this watch. This 9F86 movement isn't like the billions of disposable and ubiquitous quartz movements in your car, computer, and most watches. This 9F86 is engineered and assembled to be different. Most quartz clocks are accurate to 15 seconds per month. This watch is accurate to less than one second per month. After a year, while most quartz timepieces have strayed by 180 seconds, this SBGN003 is at most 10 seconds different. The engineers at Grand Seiko took the time to think about how to accomplish this in a movement which is still efficient, rugged, and relatively affordable. If you respect and revere mechanical watchmaking, 
fine quartz watchmaking also deserves your respect. One thing I want to do is explore <clears throat> a possible design influence for this Grand Seiko. It's hard not to see the similarities between this SBGN003 and the Rolex Explorer 2, especially the older 16570. I think there's no denying that Grand Seiko was inspired by the 16570, and they should be. It's a great fucking watch. The most obvious similarities are in the bezel. Same markings and nearly the same font. Both are GMT watches with reddish GMT arrow hands, and both use the jumping hour hand paradigm for setting the time and date. These two watches also have nearly identical dimensions, but they're also so different that the two really don't compete in my mind. They each have characteristics that work for them and their brand, and so they each are watches that I'm happy to have on my wrist. I am that kind of watch collector for whom this watch is terrific. But I think if you look outside of the cloistered world of collectors, you'll find that the SBGN003 makes sense as a first or maybe only luxury watch for a lot of people. I'd be more likely to recommend this as a first high-end timepiece than I would most mechanicals. It's got all the appeal of a fine timepiece without much of the maintenance and delicacy of springs and gears. And if you're interested in impressing people, well, if I saw this on your wrist, you'd likely have a new friend. Because when you put it all together, and you're wearing the SBGN003, you see the appeal. What you have here is a watch that's wearable on most wrists, can be sporty or dressy, can track two time zones, and is virtually always right. You don't have to wonder about this watch. You don't have to wonder if it's right for the occasion. It is. You don't have to wonder if you can take it swimming, biking, or hiking. You can. And you don't have to wonder if it's accurate. It definitely is. When I look at the SBGN003, I think about the designers, engineers, and watchmakers that were involved in getting it to my wrist. I think about the care put into creating it. And I think, God damn, that's a good looking watch. <laughs>